Hey guys, it's Chipror Adam, and welcome to the evolution of Treyarch Zombies. Today I'll be looking at all five of the Treyarch Zombie modes, so from World of War all the way to BO4, so we can see how much things have changed over the past 10 years. I didn't want to make a super overwhelming video going over every single little detail when it comes to these five modes, so instead, when we talk about any of the modes, we'll be going over three quick little things instead. The first thing is innovation and only the major ones. The next one is community. Where was the Zombies community at and what did they think of that current game? And last but not least, the difficulty. How hard was that mode and where does it rank compared to the other ones? Now that we have all of that out of the way, let's head back to 2008 and take a quick look at where all of this started. Coming back and playing World War Zombies right now is incredibly strange, especially after playing BO4 because BO4 is the most customizable and deepest zombies mode we've ever had and World of War is the complete opposite. It is so simple. World of War Zombies in itself is an innovation because obviously this is the first Trayer zombies mode we ever saw in the COD franchise. So the way I see it is Nocturne Toten is kind of the foundation of zombies because Nocturne Toten is the simplest thing ever. You spawn in, you get weapons, and you survive. So in my eyes, everything after Nocturne Toten in World of War Zombies is pretty much an innovation. And the first big one that jumps out obviously is on Vrook because Vrook was the first map to introduce the original four perks, which was Juggernog, Speed Cola, Double Tap, and Quick Revive. Moving over to Shinonuma, there wasn't really all that much that happened on this map. The big thing that jumps out to me has to be the Wonder Wolf, because the Wonder Wolf is the first wonder weapon that is kind of unique and it's not a ray gun because we have the ray gun on Nocturne and Toten, on Vrook, on Chinonuma, and on Jerese as well. So every single COD Zombies game has ray gun, but the unique wonder weapons started with Shinonuma. Last but not least, we have Jerese, and Jerese is truly an amazing map. It's hands down one of my favorite maps of all time, and it's a map that I can still play to this day and really enjoy, but Jerese did two big things. The first thing, obviously, is Pack-a-Punch. You know, Pack-a-Punch added so much to zombies. It made zombies so much replayable and so much more interesting. And then we have Easter eggs. Now, Easter eggs were already in zombies before this, but I feel like it really took off on Jerese. So when it comes to difficulty, World of War Zombies is easily the hardest zombies mode within Treyarch Zombies. I think one of the things that makes World of War Zombies so difficult is how simple it is, because when you look at BO1 or BO2 or BO3, we have all of this new stuff, you know, new perks, new weapons, new wonder weapons, new equipment that makes surviving a lot easier. With World of War, we only have, you know, basic perks and basic weapons. On top of that, the zombies in World of War are super sticky, so if you get close to a zombie, it is really hard to get away from him without getting hit. As for the community, there was honestly next to nothing. I remember myself going onto YouTube and looking up, you know, high round strategies and there were a couple of videos here and there, mainly strategies, there were some theory videos as well, but compared to today, the community back in World of War was pretty much non-existent. Black Ops 1 Zombies had a total of 7 maps. We had Keanu Toten, Dead Ops Arcade, 5, Ascension, Call of the Dead, Shangri-La, and Moon. Honestly, BO1 Zombies is a upgraded version of World War Zombies in my opinion. It's still very basic and very simple. A lot of the changes or improvements during BO1 Zombies were things that were added in during World of War, but they were improved upon and expanded here in BO1 Zombies. For example, now in BO1 Zombies, when you pack a punch, you have attachments on your guns. So that's a bit of an improvement when it comes to upgrading your guns or perks, right? Instead of having just the original four perks, we now have PhD Flopper, Deadshot Daiquiri, Stamina Up, and Mule Kick. In my opinion, the major innovation that BO1 Zombies had has to be Easter Eggs because during World War Zombies, an Easter Egg was a radio on the map, but in BO1 Zombies, we had full-on Easter Egg quests, starting with Ascension and going all the way to Moon. So during this time, this is really where we saw the community begin to grow for COD Zombies because 
I remember myself posting videos back then, and I, I noticed there were a lot more people posting videos and just engaging with COD Zombies, because now, at this point, we have amazing gameplay, we have these Easter eggs, and then on top of that, we have this amazing story all happening at the same time, and BO1 Zombies was really able to take zombies to that next level. B1 Zombies is definitely easier than World of War just because we have new perks and a ton of really OP one weapons like the Thunder Gun on Kino and Ascension. But by today's standards, B1 Zombies is still on the harder side and I would rank it right below World of War Zombies as the second hardest Treyarch Zombies mode. BO2 Zombies was a massive leap forward for COD Zombies because BO1 was very similar to World at War while BO2 Zombies really shook things up. BO2 Zombies had a total of six maps, nine if you count Farm, Bus Depot, and Town. So we had Transit, Nuketown, Dire Rise, Mob the Dead, Buried, and of course, Origins. The maps we have here are either known to be really good or really bad. Obviously, Transit is the biggest meme in the community and then we have masterpieces like mob of the dead and origins when it comes to innovation beauty zombies just did so much the first one that really jumps out at me are buildables because buildables are still in zombies to this day and it really changed things up and it made for some really interesting gameplay and strategies another big thing for me was the game modes right instead of having just your normal survival we had grief and turn which we got in a dlc one and even though these modes weren't all that popular and all that amazing, they were definitely a step in the right direction. The next couple of things that are smaller but still worth mentioning, the first one is ranks. The first time we saw ranks in a COD Zombies game, it wasn't the MP ranks, but it was ranks nonetheless. The next one, of course, we have a bunch of new perks. We have Tombstone, Vulture Raid, Who's Who, Electric Cherry, and of course, the Wonder Fizz. The last thing is custom set. When you look at BO2 Zombies on launch, you have custom game modes, you have this massive, really unique map, which was Transit, which has all these smaller maps on top of that, then you have these custom settings, you have ranks, I think Treyarch really wanted to make zombies this big thing, but they went a little bit too overboard and had to really backpedal and cut a lot of things. And custom settings is proof of that right there because there were only a couple of them, but it was only available on the base maps and not the DLC maps. When it comes to the community, BO2 Zombies really began to blow up. The first big thing was Easter egg hunting. That was something that was big, but not as big as it was in BO2 on release day man people were just hunting for easter eggs and it was so popular on top of that BO2 was the era of the challenges literally back then I did every single challenge you could think of and it was something that was looking back kind of stupid but at the same time people loved it when it comes to difficulty BO2 zombies was definitely a lot easier than BO1 because we had a lot of new little things that just made it overall an easier mode. We had perma perks, we had OP wonder weapons like the staffs and origins, we had perks, we had the bank, the ability to get all perks at once really wasn't all that hard, so there were a bunch of little things that just made BO2 zombies easier, and I would rank this third right below BO1 zombies. Going into BO3 Zombies, there were a lot of expectations. First off, this was Treyarch's first time on the three-year development cycle, so instead of two years, they now had three years to make their game, so we were expecting, just from that, a lot more content. On top of that, since BO2 had so many innovations, specifically game modes and custom settings, we were expecting a lot more of that in BO3 Zombies. So BO3 were to release, and it was kind of strange, because it felt like Treyarch took a bunch of steps forward, but at the same time took a bunch of steps back by not releasing even one new game mode or adding in any custom settings. BO3 Zombies had a ton of maps. We had Shadows of Evil, Dead Ops RK2, The Giant, Eisen Draka, Zetsuba no Shima, Gord Krovi Revelations, and of course, Zombies Chronicles. Even though there were disappointments with the lack of game modes and custom settings, Treyarch still made a ton of innovations with BO2. 
Neo 3 Zombies. The first one, of course, is Gobblegums. You might like them, you might not, but Gobblegums added a ton of different ways to play the game. Easter eggs were really ramped up as well here in BO4 Zombies, and honestly, I feel like the introduction of boss fights really made Easter eggs explode. The last two were double pap abilities, and this was really exciting because instead of just papping your gun and getting attachments, you now have these really powerful abilities. Some were a little bit too overpowered, like Deadwire, but still, it was exciting seeing them in zombies. And then, of course, we had Crate Class, which was also really exciting at the time, having attachments on your gun before papping them. The community during this time saw explosive growth, especially towards the end of BO3 with Gord Krovi, Revelations, and Zombie Chronicles. When it comes to difficulty, I think everyone remembers BO3 as being this crazy easy mode, but when BO3 first came out, sure you had some OP gums, but nothing too crazy. So at the start, BO3 was more like BO2, but as we got more gums throughout the DLC, especially Chronicles, BO3 became way too easy. From World of War to BO2, getting to round 30 or 50 was an actual accomplishment. All of a sudden, in BO3, getting to round 50 was super easy. Getting to round 100 wasn't even all that hard. So the difficulty became way, way too simple. And this is easily the easiest zombies mode we have ever seen. So we've made it all the way to the present Call of Duty Zombies, and it's fair to say that it's been off to a bit of a rough start with the game being incredibly unstable and all the glitches and, you know, blue screening on round 10. On top of that, there seems to be some tension between the community and Treyarch themselves. So it's going to be interesting to see how they change things and how they handle things going forward into the DLC season. But blue screens and fired and employees aside, BO4 Zombies is a very good game. There are a ton of major innovations, so I want to start off with Creative Class because pretty much everything within there is an innovation. The idea of selecting four perks before I jump into a game was kind of weird before BO4 dropped, but now that I've had a chance to use it for about a month now, I really love this because instead of always using the same four perks, Quick Revives, Peak Cola, Jug, Nibble Tap, now, there is a ton more variety, and I feel like I can swap out perks and not be penalized for it. Being able to select your special weapon, your equipment, and your starting gun is something that we've always wanted in a Treyarch Zombies mode, and it's really nice to see that we finally got it here in BO4. The next major innovation is mutations. This is one thing that we all thought we were going to get during BO2. We all thought we were going to have more custom settings, but we only had a few, but here in BO4, it's nice to see they finally added in a ton of different settings to customize the game and kind of make things more interesting and more challenging. It's also worth mentioning that daily orders, factions, and also the Black Ops authenticity system is coming to BO4. These things were announced before, but just are not in the game yet. BO4 Zombies has a ton of innovations, and the last one that I think is really big is the difficulties. Being able to choose between casual, normal, hardcore, and realistic, it's more inviting for new players, and at the same time, it's a lot more challenging for people who have been playing for a long time. Right now, I feel like BO4 Zombies is playing catch-up to BO3, or where BO3 was at the end of Revelations and during Chronicles because during that time, the community saw some explosive growth. But right now, since the game is incredibly unstable, it is kind of hurting the community and kind of stalling its growth. So I'm really curious to see what happens with all the DLCs and see if Treyarch can fix all these problems. When it comes to difficulty, I like where BO4 Zombies is right now. With all of the different difficulties, you can always make things harder or easier 
depending on what your skill level is, but as for the normal difficulty, I think BO4 Zombies is great. It's not too hard, it's not too easy, but that is one thing that can change. I said the same thing about BO3 when that game first came out, but with DLCs and all the OP gums, it made the game ridiculously easy, so we'll have to see what they add in with all the DLCs and all the elixirs. So for right now, I would slot BO4 Zombies just above BO3 and just below BO2 as the second easiest Treyarch Zombies mode. So there it is guys, that was the evolution of Treyarch Zombies. I have to say, after playing all of these modes over the last week or so, BO4 Zombies is really good. Right now, it is overshadowed by all of the problems, and of course, that whole Reddit thing did not help at all, but if Treyarch can make the right changes relatively soon, I think BO4 Zombies can go down as one of the best modes we've seen so far. Besides that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.